Hi, everyone. Greetings. We're doing the fourth video about the first epistle to the Corinthians, and we're this time working on verses 4 through 9 in chapter 1. And we're reading from the New American Standard Version first, and then we're also going to reference the New World Translation to see if that differs significantly from what we read in Protestant Bibles. Okay. So this is the New American Standard Version, 1 Corinthians 1, 4 to 9. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you to the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, through whom you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, there you have a, another definition. Remember last time we talked about the fact that what what is Paul's definition of a Christian? Well, Christians are those who everywhere call upon the name of the, our Lord Jesus Christ, he says mm -hmm. in verse 2. This time you have what Christianity is, which is called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. So we, we have basically two definitions of Christianity within the first nine verses, and do, do either of them apply to us? You made the point that what mm -hmm. jumps out at you is... Christ. He's, he's all over the verses. Yeah. And no. I, wouldn't have see, I wouldn't have thought of it when I was a witness because you're so focused and you don't see Jehovah here anywhere. No, no just count, even in the New World Translation, take out the first nine verses and count how many times Jesus Christ is referred to. By Jesus, by the word Jesus, or by the name, the title Christ, or by the word Lord. Count them in the New World Translation and see how many there are. Mm -hmm. And you'll see there's about nine references in nine verses no tetragrammaton. Mm. Now, what do you do with that? If you're a witness, it's... Yeah, it's I don't a, think you notice it. You don't notice it. You don't you have do, to do you anything. Do, you're not thinking about it because you're so so sure that that the prominence is Jehovah all the time that you don't see that something new has happened with the coming of Christ. But surely you see what verse 6 says. Let's just, yeah. let's, let's just read that again. This is the ESV version of verse 6. The testimony about Christ was confirmed among you. So what's yeah. the testimony about? What does the what does the New World Translation say there? In verse 6 it says, Just as the witness about Christ has been made firm among you. So the preaching is about Christ. So the, the definition of a Christian, the definition of Christianity, and the witness is all about Jesus Christ and 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 yet with you it is not it can't be yeah. because you are jehovah's witnesses and the encouragement in the last verse we read is to be called into fellowship with christ jesus yeah i mean we wouldn't that it's all very foreign language to a witness you don't talk about being in christ you don't talk about the fellowship of christ or the fellowship of the holy spirit not there uh, you know, th this it's it's language that you would you would expect in Christendom. I think as a witness, it sounds like like a church it kind sure, of it sure does phrasing phrasing. Well, the reason is is that their their language matches the New Testament. This is a, the vocabulary is the same. What does it say though? That whole passage in the in the New World Translation. How does it read? I always thank my God for you in view of the undeserved kindness of God given to you in Christ Jesus, because in everything you have been enriched in him, in full ability to speak and in full knowledge, just as the witness about the Christ has been made firm among you, so that you do not lack in any gift at all while you are eagerly awaiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also make you firm to the end, so that you may be open to no accusation in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, 
by whom you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So they haven't been able to mangle this because they can't get the, the they can't get the word Jehovah in here anywhere because everything's associated with the name Jesus. Yeah. The word Lord plainly is. So yeah. w- two other things that are lacking here if you're a witness. Christ is our yeah. teacher, obviously. He's the one in, in whom we are enriched in all knowledge, it says. But, but look at verse 8. Who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. First of all, what is the day we're all hoping for and waiting for? The day of Jesus Christ. What about Jesus Christ? We already know who he is. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for the, the day he will be revealed. Mm-hmm. Verse 7. As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why the entire church mm-hmm. believes that he will be visibly seen. It's his revealing. You say he will never be seen and you will never know him yeah. personally. When he returns to rule. And your is your faithfulness what will get you there? Uh, no. Verse 9 flatly denies that too. Yeah. God is faithful. Mm-hmm. It even says so there. God yeah. is faithful. He will sustain you. Mm-hmm. So the New World Translation actually agrees with the doctrine of the security of the believer but you don't believe that and you can't believe that because the watchtower says you can't believe that mm-hmm. it's up to you to prove your faithfulness then god will love you in turn and i i think with verse six the, you know because witness the the word witness is so important to us when we're jehovah's mm-hmm. witnesses but the witness is about the christ and this is paul writing Um, The commission he was given when he first encounters Christ was to be his witness. Yeah, listen to this. This is is Acts chapter 9, verse 16, the very account of his conversion, right? Yeah, 15, is it? This is is verse 15, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, I don't know what it says in the New World Translation. I'm going to read it from the ESV. It says, but the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles Mm -hmm. and kings and the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So Paul is commissioned to preach the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then you have Acts 22 when he tells the story again of his conversion before the Roman Tribune. And this is what he says. This, This part is actually before Ananias. So we're talking about 22 verses 16. Well, it's 26. 26, uh, sorry. Yeah. Verse. You're, you're, he does tell the story again there, too. But this is before This is before Agrippa. He tells the story. So he time. tells the story for the third time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, this is, this, is, this is the story. It's just got past the part where the Lord says to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goats. And I said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said... I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and witness to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. So the reason he's called a witness, all the apostles are called witnesses, because they have literally seen something with their eyes. Mm -hmm. I will appear to you and deliver you from people and from the Gentiles, to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified. Notice this part. Who are sanctified by faith in me. Mm. So that one Corinthians passage we started with is an amplification of this idea. Mm -hmm. We are being sanctified by Christ personally teaching us through the ministry of the Spirit. That's how we increase in knowledge day by day. But Mm -hmm. faith in me is what generates all of this sanctification. That's what's guaranteed to all Christians by faith in the person of Christ. Mm -hmm. No wonder he assumes the central position in Christianity. Follow Christ. And we do realize that in the book of Acts 2, we're told that by divine providence, they were called Christians. Mm. That's what it actually says in the New World Translation, mm-hmm. by divine providence. Mm. What's our link? I don't think I have one written down, but maybe that would be a good link, is we cover that. Uh, yeah. That particular passage. Yeah, we've called, done a, we've called. done a, uh, I think it was Alexander McLaren's video talking about that passage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See you soon. 
Bye.